everybody so today we are going to be talking about what is a personal knowledge graph and why should you care in 10 minutes or less now why is a personal knowledge graph different personal knowledge graphs flip the script a little bit where instead of having a company that is looking at this global top-down approach all employees and all of their uh, places of employment you are now with a personal knowledge graph using you as an individual, as the center of, of the universe. So in this case, it would be Ashley Faith employed at name of company. So that data still does exist on, you know, a more general knowledge graph use case. But in my case, I may be creating a personal knowledge graph of my employment history, where I can actually create all of the connections to the companies that I've worked for or that I have volunteered at or, or whatever it is that I want to showcase in my knowledge graph. Let's go through the top three versions of personal knowledge graph that are out there. All right, so the very first one I'm going to talk about because there are so many tools and I'll put some examples up here so you can see how many, I think there's like over 50 of them now that are more like end note, like personal note uh, taking tools. So the theme to these is really you can do note taking and you can interlink the notes together and the knowledge that you are gathering from them and making sure that the metadata for that information, if you have it, like I took these notes on this date and I was in this location and then I can connect it to, maybe that place is a place of inspiration for me because I get my best ideas from that location or from that best time of day. That sort of thing is very popular right now. And the main reason for that is really um, taking that cognitive load off of the individual so they can have you know, this, this uh, vault of information that they have been accumulating over the course of their life. And that's really important if you are doing research or you are working in a lab or if you're doing any kind of innovation, having an area where all of your inspiration is stored so that you can see how it all connects together, how it links out to other pieces of information that you might've gathered for it, maybe images, locations, whatever it is, that is what this is really focusing on. I almost kind of equate it to, if you know of lab notebooks, digital lab notebooks, where you can uh, take notes and then connect out to different research papers and different code that you are using to create your own experiment. It's sort of like that. And this is very popular, as you can see from so many different tools coming on the market for it. The next aspect is uh, the way that search engines curating and customizing your search experience to you as a specific person. If you are logged into Google and you are doing Google searches, it's starting to learn what you as an individual like. And you can even see this now because Google is starting to show you why these search results are showing up and you can give feedback. Now, this is a little different than the first because you don't technically uh, manage all of this data, although they are giving the feedback to you so that you can tell Google, no, I don't really, this doesn't make sense to me. I don't like this, stop showing me these kinds of things. So there is some of that feedback loop going on, but this is very common for any kind of system that is doing recommendations or search that they are now creating a lot of information just on you and your preferences to make your search experience better. And this is also happening a lot in the medical space, understanding um, a person's medical history and um, their interactions with their doctors and all of that is creating personal knowledge graphs in a company. Now, that's where we get into the third one where that's still very centralized. When you get into more of a decentralized web, that's really the Tim Berners-Lee mindset. And Tim Berners-Lee has come up with something called Solid. And I'm going to put some resources down below if you wanna find out more about that. But Solid is kind of mixing uh, a little bit between the first two. So Solid doesn't necessarily tell you what kind of data or what kind of documents or what kind of assets you can store. But what it is saying is it's giving you as the individual full control of your data and saying which 
companies or which apps you want to share certain information with and which ones you don't want to share information with. So that's where it's allowing you to connect different resources in like note taking and that sort of thing, like the first use case. And then it's kind of coupling it with well, where is your data being used for search engines, for recommendation engines, that sort of thing. And a lot of this ties back to GDPR and other privacy data ownership, uh, things that are coming up. People own their data and you can tell a company that you want your data to be forgotten. Again, there's a lot of things internationally, locally that you have to check for all of that. But this is an emerging trend that is not going to be going away that we do own our data and you get to control it in some way. Why should you care about personal knowledge graphs? So I already mentioned that uh, there's a lot of customization that you can do on your products or your solutions. You don't have to be selling anything to be able to use these to help your end users uh, improve what you're, you're offering them. So some examples of this would be tailoring recommendations on an e-commerce site very specifically to that user because a lot of users have very specific needs so search is obviously one really important area where that customization and feedback loop with the with the, the individual for their personal knowledge graph is so so helpful another area is well what if i wanted to market myself to find a new job right so linkedin is trying to figure out who uh i should be connected to and if there are jobs that i'm interested in but what if I could supply better information because I am creating my own personal knowledge graph of my own network, maybe people that are not on LinkedIn so I can supply that to LinkedIn so it gets better results for me. Or maybe I just really want to showcase how I can do a personal knowledge graph with the places that I've been employed at. And how are those places of employment? What do they have in common? I can actually find some really cool information about myself, about the companies that I've worked for that have made me happy or dissatisfied that I can use to find my next job and say, hmm, how much of this criteria does this new place have for me that I might wanna consider over maybe a different job that I might be offered? So there are some fabulous ways that you can use this from a skill sets perspective. The last and I think the most important reason that you should care about a personal knowledge graph is if you are trying to track down if your bank got hacked or if um, a password got corrupted, where in your network did that happen? So if you are creating a personal knowledge graph, you can actually track not putting the exact passwords and actual individual like values in, but saying, oh, these five apps are the apps that I used that password on. So one of them is where the hacking happened. And so you can go in and first you know where to go and change all of the passwords that were corrupted, but you can also track down what is trustworthy or give feedback to that company because oftentimes it's not the company that's not trustworthy, it's maybe they had a breach and they didn't realize it. So being able to track down where there are risks and where there are potential breaches in your own personal knowledge graph when it comes to your personal identity and your personal information is incredibly valuable. And I really truly believe that is one of the most powerful reasons that we need to get into personal knowledge graph way faster than we really are. And the biggest reason that we can't get there very fast is because if you look at any of the examples that I've gone through today, they are all still very uh, data person centric. We need to make these more accessible to the everyday user, people that don't even really understand data very well. But, you know, someone like my grandma, that's my test. If my grandma can use it, we are going to be successful for this.